And we are now back with our second divisional preview and prediction series as I am joined by Colin Glover and Sorgi Stories, Anthony, uh, the co-host of Sorgi Stories, as I meant to say. Uh, how are we doing, guys? Colin, we'll start off with you. Uh, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm ready to get into my division. We did your guys' division last week. We did them Steelers. Uh, Anthony, our residential Packers fan with Lincoln gone today, he had a family reunion, so I guess had some family obligations to tend to. So, uh, Anthony, are you ready to start off this NFC North preview? Oh, yeah. Go back. It's going to be an interesting season. So again, make sure that you hit that subscribe button wherever you're watching. We'll have these videos out on different platforms. Uh, check out if you're on my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button on the football expert as well as Sorgi stories and American football network. All links will be in the description. So if you want to check that out, also there should be cards for my video, at least uh, in the top right hand corner. So let's get started with today's video. So with this video, we are going to start off with an off-season winner, then we're going to make our way into season award winners, and then we're going to end with our predictions. So if you want to know the order that we're starting with, Colin, we'll start off with you. Who is your NFC North 2023 off-season winner? I'm going to have to pick the Bears for this season. They did add a lot of pieces to their defense and add a lot of pieces to their offense, and I'm ready to see what DJ Moore can do in the, the Windy City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Anthony. I have, I have to agree with Colin there. Um, the Bears have had it out. Um, Nate Davis, T.J. Edwards, Jermaine Edmonds, D.J. Moore, all really good acquisitions um, in trading free agency this offseason. With that it out, they won. Yeah, and, and I agree. Like as a Bears fan myself, I'm I'm gonna pick the Bears, but I obviously I don't think that this is very biased. Like you added a right tackle, you severely needed one. You added a guard, you needed one, and at and by adding a guard, you moved Cody Whitehair to center, and then also you added on the defensive end uh, with adding a cornerback, linebackers. But I won't get too far into it. I just think that the Bears won the offseason. But really, where I think they won the offseason was the trade and getting DJ Moore, getting those first round draft picks. I think Ryan Poles did an expert job at navigating his second offseason as general manager of the Bears. So, like I said, we're going to now move into our awards segment. This will be a continual theme as we really get into these divisional previews. We're going to start off with Defensive Player of the Year. Colin, who do you have as your Defensive Player of the Year for the NFC North? I think I'm going to go with the best cornerback in this division and Jair Alexander of the Packers. I really like Jair as a player. He has great coverage, and I'm ready to see what he does this season. Anthony, who are your thoughts on uh, the defensive player year? I think I know where you're going with this one. Um, without a doubt, one of my favorite players on the Packers is Jair. Um, I agree with Colin. What a great player he is. Been injured a little bit these last couple of years, but I think he's going to have a great season this year. Um, hopefully, Joe Barry can uh, help him at defensive as the defensive coordinator leading that defense. But whether Joe Barry is a good year or not, Jair is going to be a beast. Yeah, and I think that Jair is probably – uh, one of the better cornerbacks in this league and, uh, as an entirely, not just this division. Um, and I think that most of this division, you have a lot of pretty decent quarterback play with Jair and Jalen Johnson and stuff like that. The Lions, kind of, it depends on the game. Um, and the Vikings, no. Um, but my defensive player of the year is going to an edge rusher. That edge rusher's name is Aiden Hutchinson. I think last year he had a fantastic rookie year and a campaign that I think really did a good job. But with Justin Houston being the opposite end, um, is it Justin or James? Is it James? Justin. Justin. Okay, Justin Houston opposite of Aiden Hutchinson for full season now, I think that that is going to really help his sack totals and take the pressure off of him that really had that. And I think he'll have a much better secondary defending so he can get those sack totals up a little bit more. I think, again, he had a good season. By no means do I think Alexander is going to be far behind, but I think just the raw numbers is what I would give for Aiden Hutchinson winning this award. Now we're going to move on offensive player of the year. Anthony, why don't you start us off? 
I have another guy from Green Bay, Aaron Jones, a star running back there. Um, I think that with Jordan Love now at quarterback, you're going to see play action a lot, um, which is going to be you're you're going to see guys. Uh, AJ Dillon is going to be back there, but I think Aaron Jones will be used as a weapon, um, maybe lining up in the backfield but catching passes. We'll see what's going to happen there. Um, and overall, what a great player Aaron Jones mm-hmm. is. I think it's going to be a nice, solid year for him, um, and I can't wait to see how he's used in this. He's he's definitely due for a good season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Colin, your thoughts, Offensive Player of the Year? I think I want to go with one of the most underrated quarterbacks. I mean, I guess the name just gets people stirring up and going like, oh, yeah, no, he's not going to do good. But I'm going to go with Jared Goff on the Detroit Lions for Offensive Player of the Year. He's really not that bad, but I guess it's just the name Jared Goff. You kind of just give that stare up like, why Jared Goff? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, his I think numbers were good last season. Yeah, and and it wasn't like he was with just this absolutely elite offensive weapons. Uh, like d- by no means were they bad. Like Amon Ross, St. Brown's a good wide receiver. Uh, Jamison Williams, even though like he wasn't really around, he's a decent wide receiver when he was. Um, Quentin Cephas um, and the rest of the uh, suspended wide receivers uh, for the. Um, Detroit or Lions. Uh, we made jokes last weekend about uh, Joe Mixon. Now we have to make jokes this weekend about um, the Lions and their lack of um, self awareness. Um, they were they were too busy biting knee chops or, or kneecaps. Um, but now for my offensive player of the year, I, I, as a Bears fan, there's nothing I can do other than simply put the name Justin Fields out there uh, by. He is the most dynamic player in the NFL, by in my opinion. I think that after this year, you looked at a guy that single-handedly kept the Bears in the game for most of the season. And last year, they was, the Bears situation was the opposite of the Vikings situation. The Vikings won a bunch of close games. The Bears lost a bunch of close games. I think that that's going to start even out this year. And I think that's going to kind of be the difference because D- Justin Fields now has actual weapons. Remember, last year, his weapons, after Darnell Mooney got injured, was Chase Claypool and um, Dante, Pe- Dante Pettis and Equinemius St. Brown and I don't even know some of the remember some of the names. Like they were just awful. Like guys that shouldn't even have really been on practice squads. They were just terrible. Uh, I think Fields will have a much better passing season stats wise, um, and overall will have a much better um, third year campaign uh, with the Bears. So I think you have to go as personally offensive player of the year, Justin Fields. Now we're going to make our way to Rookie of the Year. And I'm going to start off with this category here because I'm excited about this player. Um, And as you guys talked about, uh, you talked about with the Lions, Colin, with Jared Goff being really underrated. Um, I think that another player that's really underrated is Jameer Gibbs. I think that Gibbs is definitely a player that with the pick and with all the controversy at number 12 overall and just kind of like, what are you doing? Uh, kind of mode. Um, I would. I think a lot of people overlook how good of a player he is, both as a pass catcher and as a running back. And I think because he fits both of those molds, I think that he will be the rookie of the year in this division. Plus, it also helps that ro- a running back is the quickest position that you can kind of fill in um, as a rookie. All the other rookies, uh, Darnell Wright as the Bears first rounder, Lucas Van Ness as the Packers, um, or Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison maybe, but um, I digress. Uh, Anthony, rookie of the year pick. The Bears first round pick, Darnell Wright. I think he's going to have a good year. I thought he got drafted too high, but when I looked at the, the rookies here, I'm like, Jameer Gibbs is going to be sharing the backfield with David Montgomery. Um, Lucas Van Ness, I don't think it's going to be a star of the Packers line. And then Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson's there in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. So I think Darnell Wright is going to stand out the most. I think he's going to have a good season protecting Justin Fields. Colin, rookie of the year pick. So it's crazy. I, at first, I think I had a change of heart because I just got to change my heart for the boy that's coming from Pittsburgh, and that's Jordan Addison of the Vikings. <laughs> I think I wanted him to come to Pittsburgh because the Kenny Pickett, Jordan Addison 
duo would have been great, but I think he'll do mm. good, especially since most people are going to be double covering Justin Jefferson most of the season. So he'll get a lot of, of targets to show who he is. And he is that wide receiver. Kenny Pickett told us himself, like when he's running, he's running. Mm. Yeah, and he, does he not is on the play. Yeah, he's a dynamic player. And I think um, that wide receiver duo, uh, as we talked about defensive backs in this division, um, really it's the wide receivers in this division outside of the Lions situation. I think all of the situations are pretty solid. I think the Packers, you have a lot of question marks um, with some of your players and Christian Watson and Romeo Dubs and stuff like that. But I don't think it's a bad unit. Um, I think that if you don't live up to potential, it could be a really bad unit, um, but I think that they probably will. So, um, Finally, it comes down to this. MVP, Colin, start us off with your MVP of the division. Also, I, I should say this. This is the MVP of the division. These are offensive and rookie of the years just solely in this division. I think I made that clear, but in case I didn't, go ahead, Colin. I have the – uh, he's just going to gritty himself into the MVP and let's take Justin Jefferson. Anthony, I, I got to say much. Yeah. Well, Jay Jettis is a great player, but um, later when we're talking about the Vikings, the team, I'll explain a little bit more about why I don't have him. I've got Jared Goff. He passed for 4,438 yards last year. That's sixth in the league. And he was tied for fifth in touchdowns last year with 29 I think it's going to be a great year with Amon Ross St. Brown there, um, as well as the other great wide receivers. Obviously, Jamison Williams suspended, but I think Jared Goff will be able to have a good enough year to be the division MVP. Yeah, and Jamison Williams will have more games played this year than last year anyway. So, um, But MVP, I'm going to have to go with uh, Justin Jefferson. He is just – so much of a playmaker offensively the Vikings are still going to be much of a powerhouse and with Jordan Addison being there I think yeah we'll take away some targets from Justin Jefferson but overall I do think that it is an upgrade and an addition to that team overall so I'm going to pick Justin Jefferson even though I really really wanted to pick Justin Fields I did go with Justin Jefferson so now we are going to make our way to the divisional prediction part of the podcast uh, slash show. We are going to start off with Lincoln's prediction here. Uh, like I said, Lincoln was not able to make it, but we do have his uh, picks for the division. In fourth place, he has the Chicago Bears. Um, I'm not going to say anything about this because I'm not happy with him right now uh, by having the Bears in fourth place, but hopefully he will join us next time to defend uh, his ridiculous opinions. Uh, Colin, who do you have in fourth place? It's it's kind of hard with this division because all of the teams are trying to rebuild on what they have, except for the Vikings. The Vikings went pretty far, but they won a lot of close games. It wasn't really by a landslide or anything like that. I'm probably going to have to go with the Lions this season. I think they have to rebuild a little bit more in the sense of just seeing where that team is going to be. They have playmakers, and they've got playmakers over the time. They just need to see what that's going to turn into, and then they'll probably be good the next season. Yeah, I definitely think that this is a it's an interesting division. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Anthony, who do you have at your number four spot? Up in Minnesota, you're not going to be hearing much skull during January. I've got the Vikings in fourth place at six and eleven. I don't think it's going to be like last year where they win close games. I think they're going to lose close games. That defense, that's what worries me. Um, Harrison Smith, a really good player. Dean Lowry sadly joined the dark side after being in Green Bay. But outside of that, I don't see much out of that defense, and that's what worries me. I think that they're going to be giving up plenty of touchdowns, and you're, you're not going to see much on that side of the ball. The offense, I like it, but I just don't think they're going to be that great of a team. Yeah. Guys, I think we complement each other way too well. I have the Packers in fourth place, so we each have a different uh, team in fourth place. Uh, let's see how the rest of this goes. Uh, the reason for the Packers being in fourth place, in my personal opinion, is you just got too many question marks. You have a new quarterback. 
Uh, like I said, I think your wide receivers live up to it, but we'll see. Like, it's just another kind of question mark. The offensive line is not going to be as good as it has been. Running back core will be fantastic. Tight ends, you really don't have any, in my opinion, that are proven that are proven players that are proven players. I know you have Tucker Craft, and I know you have Luke Musgrave. By no means are they bad players, but a, a tight end is a position that. You, as a Bears fan, I know this. Say, Cole Komet, it took him, it, I think he's in year four now. It took him three years to really come out as a tight end. And he was considered the best tight end in his class. By no means was a good tight end class. It wasn't like if Michael Mayer was in swap draft classes, Michael Mayer would have been the best tight end in the class too if we're swapping Notre Dame tight ends or whatever. It is. Like it wasn't a great class, but it took Cole Komet three years. Tight end is not a position like running back that quickly comes out. That's what. That's why I say that. I know I saw your face, Anthony, um, but – I do think that tight end is, again, kind of a question mark because as first-year tight ends, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, defensively, I do think that you have some a lot of aging-ish players to a degree. Um, you have so, Some players are young. You still have some edge rushers and Lucas Van Nesk and Rashawn Gary and stuff like that, and Kenny Clark is a good defensive tackle. But I think overall, especially in that secondary – the injury bug is possible and if not probable compared to what injury history has happened with that secondary. And in my opinion, unless if I'm missing something here, Anthony, you can interject that it's a thin secondary with a lot of older injury prone pieces. So that's my opinion at number four, number three, um, Lincoln has the Packers, so I'm kind of surprised about this pick. Uh, he has the Packers finishing third in the division. Remember, Lincoln is a Packers fan as well as Anthony. So Packers in third for Lincoln, that was a little bit of a shocker. Colin, what is your thoughts? Or, no, I'm sorry, Anthony. Let's go with Anthony to start off this one. Uh, number three in the division. Go Pack, go all day, but it, it, they're going to be third. Nine and eight I have the Packers at this season. Um New quarterback, the Super Bowl 60 MVP, Jordan Love. I expect him to be pretty good this season. Um, I, I, It'll be a slow process, but he'll be tested down the stretch when the Packers have to play teams like the Chargers and Giants um, there at the end of the year. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, both going to have good years. And then after that, Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs will make a step up. The guy I'm really excited to see in this Packers offense, though, not your stereotypical Packers fan, Jaden Reed, who we took in the second round. I'm excited to see what we get out of him as that third receiver in this offense. The tight ends, I like Musgrave and Kraft. Um, offensive line, Elton Jenkins, Josh Nyman, David Bakhtiari. If Bakhtiari can stay healthy, this line's going to be really good. And then defensively, Lucas Van Ness, I said he was going to go 13th to the Packers. I liked him, and he did, so I'm really excited to see him. And they put him there on the line as well. Um, as I don't know what just happened to Reichley there, but we will keep going. Preston Smith and Devondre Campbell, both great linebackers, as well as Rashawn Gary. So I expect a good amount of um, talent from the middle of the defense. And then the secondary, Reichley. Talked about it. Jair Alexander's really good, but on the ESPN depth chart, our uh, one of our safeties is Jonathan Owens. The only reason you should know that name is because he's Simone Biles' husband. Um, so, so that's a little bit of a problem there. Darnell Savage is okay, and then Rasul Douglas, the other corner. I like him, um, but I don't know how he's going to do. Yeah. Number three in the division, Colin, what are your thoughts? I have the Vikings in third. I feel like I am the only non-NFC North fan that thinks the Packers could go past three, I guess. But hmm? it's just like like Anthony said, the Vikings, the offense looks good, but this, the defense just does not look promising at all. I mean, the only player I can really think about are only players I can think about are like Harrison Smith and Booth. I think Booth, Andrew Booth will do better this season as I watched him when he was at Clemson. And I just 
I don't see the Vikings doing as great as they did last season. Yeah. Uh, number three for me is the Minnesota Vikings. I am going to agree with Colin on that one. Uh, I just think that the Vikings – they're in a tough spot. Like overall, I think that they went from a team that they went, I think, was it 9-0 and or was it 8-0 and in one-score games? I think it was just an absurd amount of wins in one-score games. Uh, I think it was 9-0 and was the final tally. Um, and you just had a team that – it's not that it was just luck. They obviously were clutch. But – coming back against the Colts like that, those things are just not going to happen. The Bears aren't going to finish 0-6 in the division. The Packers, um, I think you went 2-4 and four last year in the division, right? Uh, um, yeah, I want to say so. Yeah. Um, so – you just you're not gonna see as much disparity between the teams like you did last year. Uh, so overall, I think that this is going to be a tough sledding for the Vikings. Again, like Colin said, their defense is just awful. It is probably a top five worst defense in the league. So that's my opinion at number three. Now on to number two. Like I said, we're gonna continue to start off with Lincoln's predictions. Number two, he has the Vikings. Um I don't know what he's thinking, but whatever. He uh, will listen to this podcast and probably be screaming in the comment section. So that will be fun. Uh, if anybody has made that, uh, make sure you go comment down in the comment section about how stupid American Football Network uh, predictions are. It, it really will be fun because next podcast, uh, it's just it's going to be an entertaining time. Um, so, Colin, why don't you start us off your number two team? I think – I guess go pack go. I got the Packers at number two. Um, they are the most, I guess you would say, I wouldn't say completely fully well made team, but they have the most balance on both sides of the ball. Um, with having, I think the tight ends, the two tight ends that they drafted is going to be good to mentor under Mercedes Lewis, which is coming back this season. Uh, the line is really not. Or is he coming back? No, nah, he's not. He. Uh, I thought he did. I think he signed with the – I'm looking this up right now. Mercedes Lewis is a free Didn't agent. Didn't he return? He's yeah. still a free agent? I thought he was coming back. It said he was coming back. No way. Well, I guess the tight ends will still be fine without him, but hopefully they bring Mercedes Lewis back after I said that. Um. <laughs> But Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon will be great just to help uh, Jordan Love out, too. I think the wide receivers could improve as the season goes on, too, with um, not having Aaron Rodgers, who only threw to Alan Lazard most of the time last season, um, which I'll talk more about Aaron Rodgers when we get to that division. But... <laughs> There's plenty to say. There's plenty to say about Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Anthony, number two team. Number two, the Bears. The Bears. Um, I've got them at 10 and 7. An improvement of seven games from last year. Um, Justin Fields, who is, by the way, seventh in rushing yards among all players last year in the NFL, um, only behind some great running backs like Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, and others. Um, I mean, he's a great runner. I think he'll improve his passing this year as well with an improved offensive line. Defensively, Eddie Jackson, Jermaine Edmonds, TJ Edwards, the former Eagle, Nate Davis um, on the offensive line, as I had talked about previously, and Chase Claypool, DJ Moore. All those guys I think are going to have really good seasons. Yeah. Um, and here's a shocking kind of thing. In the first – Five games, I think it is. Five games, maybe six. Justin Fields didn't have a single game over 30 rushing yards. Like, I think maybe it was 40. But, like, he didn't have that many rushing yards in any of his first couple games. So you really can look at how many rushing yards he was getting in those games, the 170 against the Dolphins, the 150 against the Eagles. That Those games just make it so impressive and stuff like that and how fast he is. Number two in my division, uh, I am going to go with Da Bears. Um, so before we turn into a Saturday Night Live skit, um, I'm going to basically kind of second all of Anthony's ideas of that. Um, 
this is a Bears team that wide receiver core wise is so much better. Um, it is a team that you, it, Darnell Mooney is not a number one wide receiver in this NFL, at least at this point in his career. I hope that he is eventually. Um, but right now I do think that Darnell Mooney is a good number two, an elite number two, in my opinion. Um, but that just, when you add a number one wide receiver like that, it pushes everybody down the depth chart, making everyone look better. It's the same thing in baseball that if you add a guy at that top number three or four spot you push everyone down and it makes everybody look better um that's where you can get lineups where Aaron Judge is hitting number six in it or stuff like it, those type of thing but I'm getting way off track here um but really the main reason for the Bears being number two and not number one is I just simply don't know what this team is this division has all sorts of question marks in it and to be honest same with the AFC North Anybody could win it, and to be honest, I wouldn't be that surprised other than Green Bay if if they went like 13-4 and four or 12-5. and five. Like if Green Bay was that good, I'd be shocked because that means Jordan Love is a top-10 quarterback. But outside of that or a team going 15-2 and two or 16-1, and one, I would not be shocked by really any result in this division because you could convince me that the Vikings go 3-14 and 14 because their defense is – awful and they trade away maybe a Kirk Cousins or Kirk Cousins gets injured and then who do you have to play quarterback there is literally nobody except maybe bench warmer um Case Keenum is re-signed or something I don't know maybe they're maybe they have another miracle sitting on the bench or something I don't know um but I'm gonna stop talking because I am probably rambling on here too long finally we got to the number one spot I'm gonna go with Lincoln's first number one in the division is the Lions for him, and I have the Lions at number one as well. So reason for me having the Lions at number one, and I'm pretty sure Lincoln kind of agrees with this uh, with me when we talked about it, is just simply the fact that the Lions, in my opinion and in his, is the most well-rounded team in this division um, in the fact that I think that they got better defensively, and I think that this year just defensively you can't be as bad as last year. I think that um, – Defensive line wise, you are going to have a lot better of a uh, rushing. Like you're not gonna, you're gonna be better in the rushing side of the game. And I think because of the pass rushers that you have, you should be better in the pass game. Uh, and then offensively, you just have a team that physically has the best offensive line in football. Um, just such a dominant team, and they it, they just they are so emblematic of what the NFC North is as a division and really what the North uh, as a uh, two division set is in the uh, NFL landscape uh, compared to the air raid styles of the AFC West and the uh, superficial and um, lucky go uh, style. The AFC are of the South divisions and of the absolute kind of like, legacy that the uh, east divisions have so anthony why don't you give us your number one team the blue kitty is gonna go roar this season as tom <laughs> Brock, you would say cj gardner johnson leading that defense what a great player he was in philadelphia i think he'll continue to do that in detroit offensively ben johnson a great coordinator amon ross st brown jared goff um David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs are, I think, are both going to be good. And then um, Frank Ragnow, the center there, is incredible. But uh, I think they're going to keep biting those kneecaps and uh, go 12-5, and five, win the division. And maybe, I just maybe, maybe there's a chance that they can go to the Super Bowl. You forgot You forgot the Lions' best player. They're tied in. Panay Sewell. That's true. So anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about, just go look up uh, Panay Sewell fourth down conversion against the Packers, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, Colin, your number one pick, because I don't think it's the kiddies for you. It's not. Um, it's something a little bit bigger than that. It's called the Bears. Da Bears. Da Bears. Um, I just think that they'll sneakily be good like the Steelers will be in the AFC North. I think that they basically kind of do the same thing, even though 
their records were different, and the Steelers are a little bit better. Um, <laughs> hey guys, I didn't I didn't tell him what to do. I didn't have the Bears win the division, but he does. So I I think the Bears win the division at this point. Like right? Who knows? We'll we'll just have to see. I think they added a lot of key weapons that they need to push this team forward. Um, wide receivers are looking good, except for Chase Claypool that plays like he's five eight. But um. I think they go on, and Justin Fields is the number one rusher on the team, and probably the best running back on the team, too. I don't know. Like, Khalil Herbert is a pretty good running back. Uh, that's all I'm going to say is, like, Khalil Herbert, he averaged six yards a game, uh, six yards a, not a game, six yards a uh, rush attempt last year. Um, but we're going to wrap up this podcast. Uh, Colin, any closing thoughts that you'd like to add about this division? Um, there's, I just can't get over that. The, what I've been thinking about the whole entire time is Dalvin Cook being released and what happened, what that's going to take a toll on the Vikings. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and even though we really, uh, like we really didn't turn into first take here and have much arguing between the Bears and the Packers fans and stuff like that. Uh, maybe we'll have to get Lincoln on one and do a special episode of uh, Bears versus Packers, who will be better this season, because I think we're kind of split evenly on who. I think me and Colin are a little bit more Bears, and you and uh, Anthony and Lincoln are a little bit more Packers, but I think those kind of make a little bit more sense. So, uh, Anthony, I know you had a shout-out you want to do. Uh, any closing thoughts from yourself? So, closing thoughts first. Um, Rockley, if the Bears make the playoffs, which I think there's a good chance they will, <laughs> when they get eliminated in the wild card round, um, I, I hate to tell you, but there's going to be – Oh, come on. This is <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of playing in the great state of Wisconsin of the happy snaps combo song the Bears. Um, um, hey, let's just <laughs> uh, just remember that hey, when I when Justin Fields says um your new owner has arrived and has bought that big check of a Packers size logo that says he's the new owner of the Packers. I'm just saying it's coming, boys. It's coming. It is coming. Justin Fields is coming to be the owner, the daddy, the Mr. In Charge of the Packers organization starting this year. That's all I'm saying is we're turning this Packers rivalry around and we're taking it in a good direction. That's all I'm saying. I think he's still mad about Aaron Rodgers taking over the Wendy. I am mad about Aaron Rodgers. And here's the thing. I don't like Aaron Rodgers on a personal level. And I don't like him on a player level. And if he ever came to the city of Chicago, there would be, let's just say the LA riots would be like a little dumpster fire of like a little tiny um, fire that the little blue kitten started. Um, no, if the, that would be like the comparison, the entire city of Chicago, including soldier state soldier stadium would be burnt to the ground within like a half an hour. This podcast would be longer than the time it took for the uh, soldier field to burn down. If air Raj ever became a Packer, let's just be honest here oh, as goodness. a bears fan. I completely understand that. Uh, and um, I know I cut a, off Anthony, but Anthony, yeah. uh, go ahead. Um, well, first of all, in response to that, as an owner of the Packers, I can say Justin Fields will not be owning the team anytime <laughs> soon. Um, and uh, my shout out for the episode, the Lombardi Cancer Foundation, a great organization. Um, in honor of Coach Lombardi's legacy, they are they were established and they work to prevent cancer, provide the best care to those fighting it and find a cure. They've raised over $21 million since 1971. You can go to LombardiFoundation.org to donate today. Go back. And I think that's a pretty good way to close it off here. Uh, the Bears dominating as always. Um, and to basically close it out again, uh, make sure that you go ahead, subscribe to Sorgy Stories, American Football Network, and the Football Expert, my channel. Uh, and that's going to wrap it up. For Reichley, I am joined by Colin Glover and Anthony Sorgi. Until next time, we will see you. Bye, guys.